So now we're going to move on to Rick. Oh, I have more stuff. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so you'll, you'll have questions at the end, Peter, I promise. I promise you that. Um, so I helped Rick and his lovely wife, Julie, move into a condo after many years um, in their home. So Rick, if you can tell everyone a little bit about the house you and Julie lived in before you considered purchasing your condo, what were some of the things that you loved about it, and what were some of the parts that you were genuinely you know, not sad about giving up? Um, well, first of all, Thanks for letting me be here. This is really fun. Um, yeah, our original house was uh, something that Julie and I, well, our, our very first house was a very small house on Mac or, uh, Plainfield. And after our first son uh, came into the world, um, about three and a half years later, we had a second one on the way. And we thought, well, we can either stay in this very small house or we're going to move. So we decided to move. And we were fortunate enough to buy a lot on a subdivision that had been pushed out on Macintosh Avenue, and we absolutely loved it. Um, so we were able to build the home that we wanted to build by basically copying a parade home that we saw. Um, we went through a number of parade homes. We saw one that in particular we just thought was fantastic, and we rebuilt it with a few minor modifications, and we, we absolutely loved it. There was never a day we went in, unlike a lot of people, and you know uh, what Peter had mentioned previously, we were very fortunate to every day say, I love this house. And I could go back, mark my own words, and I told my wife, I said, I'm going to die here. <laughs> I will never, ever leave this home. I love it so much. And part of that was the community, for sure. I mean, we moved in at a time where all other young couples, we were 31 years old at the time. In six months, I will be 60. So it's a different, it's a different perspective. But the neighborhood and growing up with all those kids and being in the same elementary school and all of that thing, it was, it was priceless. Um, you know, and I, I would have never changed that for anything. It was, it was a beautiful, beautiful place to be. Um, you know, it was charming, it was magical. Um, now, that being said, to answer your other question, why would you leave the house that you swore you were gonna die in? Um, and honestly, in a, in a 30 year span, you know, you look at things differently. Um, you're suddenly not young anymore. And <laughs> this house had beautiful, beautiful staircase that we traveled a lot because all the bedrooms were were upstairs. It was a four bedroom home. One of them was down downstairs and whatnot. But you know, nonetheless, absolutely delightful. But at some point, it's a big house. And what we discovered after we became empty nesters, both our boys moved out and are now with their wonderful significant others. And we were kind of rattling around in this house. We probably used one third of it. We spent most of our time in the kitchen. Uh, probably a partial amount of it in half the dining room and half of the living room, and then we slept there and we showered there. And that was pretty much it. And so the economy started getting weird. Things in the world became weird. We you know, went through COVID, we went through odd things. And as you age, one of the things that is striking to you is that you're not absolutely in control of everything. You are not invincible. And anything that you think you can will into existence, you can't. So with all these outside forces, I, you know, Julie and I, um, as emotional as we were about the home, we're also very pragmatic people. And the one advice I was given as a young man is you never let your heart make decisions for you. And that's great advice. Only ever use your head to make decisions and your wisdom because that will, you know, your heart is dumb. Your heart is a stupid thing. You'd never listen to it. It's great for writing poetry and things like that, but don't, don't let it make your financial decisions for you. So we said, at, you know, at one point, we could, you know, and, and again, we were fortunate that we had paid off the house years prior. And I said, babe, if things go south, because I'm self-employed, and that could change any minute. I could be out on the street. You know, sometimes you own a business, sometimes a business owns you, and sometimes the markets change, and you know, you could be done in no time. And that doesn't elude me. So I said, you know, if things go south, we have this big, beautiful, pretty house, but we can't eat the drywall. 
you know, if things get really bad. And, you know, as you do mature, you see that things change and not always for the better. So we thought it was high time that, you know, we downsized. We contacted Laura and she did an amazing job um, basically whooping us into shape to get this house, you know, ready for sale. Now, we did, um, you know, nobody ever sits around and says, oh, I loved moving. Moving was super fun. No, no, it's not. Moving stinks. Um, but it was worse for us in that we wanted to hit a particular timeline before the summer ran out because our house looks beautiful in the summer. And so we were up till two in the morning packing stuff. And when you're in a home for 25 years, you know, and we consider ourselves minimalists, okay, my wife and I do. We just don't need a lot of stuff. We unpacked and unearthed things that you just simply can't imagine. So it was an odyssey for us to get from clearing out the house to getting into a condo that, by the way, we do love. Um, but to really answer that question of what was it that, you know, you would s struggle or not struggle to give up, I couldn't wait to get rid of land or yard chores or any outdoor thing that had to do with the house. Hated it. I hated it since I was a young man. My first job was being in a lawn mowing business. You know, I mowed lawns for people when I was a kid to make money. And I hated it then. I like the money. And I hate it now. So I never wanted to do that ever again. And my wife and I have passions that we both pursue. And we now have gobs more time for that. And we are on a track to simplify our lives. Um, because that's what we want, and it's, it's a good path to take. So anyway. So what were some of the things that actually Julie and the boys even struggled with when it came time to make that decision and actually sell the family home? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a tough one, and it's going to be a tough one for everybody because if you have a heart and you have memories, it's, it's going to be tough. Now, that being said, you know, we are pretty pragmatic about, you know, what a home is to us. And the biggest struggle was actually for my youngest son. He was actually pretty teary about the fact that he wouldn't be able to show his kids the room that he grew up in. And I said, you know, I, I get that. Um, and it's not like Julie and I didn't stop periodically when we were taking things off the boys' walls in their rooms and going, oh no, you know, what do we, what do, we do with this? And, you know, sure, that, that is definitely gonna happen. But we don't have any regrets because what we come to find out is that Julie and I, we make the home. We are the ones that make the home that our boys are used to coming to. And when we got into the new condo and everybody came over, it just felt exactly like home. And there was still stuff on the walls that was from our previous home. You know, home is where you hang your hat, home is where the heart is, home is what you make of it. So he got over that in short order, and it was, um, I would never change that decision one one bit. Um, Julie, on the other hand, she didn't struggle. As a matter of fact, she said to me about a weekend, she said, is it wrong that I don't really, really miss our old house? And I said, nope, not if you love this one. So that, that was a good thing. I love to hear that, yeah. that's so, so helpful. Um, so what were some of the things that were most important to you as we started to narrow down our condo options? Because there's, you know, there's a wide sea of options out there and there were definitely some specifics that we needed to find. Yeah, that's true. We, we at first were kind of enamored with some slab homes and or townhouses that we saw. The only problem with those construction is that they, they basically sit on a fairly thin slab of cement and then they are two stories of wood constructed things. A um, little bit about my life, peek into my world. Um, I'm a drummer and I play in a band <laughs> with my son um, who kind of got me into all this stuff and we have been playing music since he was very young and oh, you know, drums are loud. Um, fortunately I do play electronic so I can play them with headphones so I don't bother my neighbors but once in a while we like to let it out of the box and really really jam. Um, pounding on a kick pedal of a drum kit can reverberate all the way through an entire townhouse complex. No problem. Um, 
So that had to be out. My wife, if I may brag for just a minute, um, she is currently the Midwest gold medal women's rowing champion. Um, yeah, I know. She's awesome. And um, she's also the president of Grand Rapids Rowing Club. So if any of you are interested in learning rowing, <laughs> come on down and check her out. Um, at any rate, uh, she, during the off season when she can't row on the actual water, has this thing they call an erg. It's a very noisy, clattering, loud rowing machine thing. And she's on it constantly. So because she has to. That's how you maintain being gold medal champion. Um, and so therefore, in our world, we needed something with a basement, something very hard, and something very, very walled off from our neighbors, because we didn't want to just move in and immediately be the most hated couple in the entire community. So um, Laura was amazing in that we, uh, you know, we, we looked at a lot of things, and, and I will admit, we were a very, very particular couple. We, you know... We don't like a lot of things, but the things that we do like, they have to kind of be perfect. So um, we're a f bunch of fussy budgets, and Laura was very accommodating to us. And we found uh, Meadow Creek, which was uh, new construction. Um, they did, in fact, have basements. We don't, you know, fortunately, we don't have knee issues yet at this point. Um, so going up and down stairs is not a problem, and it gave us the quiet that we needed. Now, the other beautiful thing about most new condo construction is there is generally about a four-inch thick wall of two-inch gypsum separated by foam, an air gap that basically, you can't hear anything. And at one point, I actually went down and turned up all my amps and everything and the TV as loud as it could go, went next door, knocked on the door of Leslie and Dell, our lovely neighbors who we adore, and I said... Can you hear anything? And they're like, what are we supposed to be hearing? And I said, good, that's all I need to know. And, and it's fantastic. So in, in that regard, you're not going to really hear anything about your neighbors, if, especially in, in newer situations. So, Awesome. So one of the things we were able to, um, you know, kind of avoid some of the crazy competition because majority of condos these days are on the market for 10 days or less. They're very, very competitive. And so by purchasing a new build, what were some of the things that you liked about that in terms of there were a few things that you changed? And Yeah, um, actually in our situation, we could only change a couple of things because in Meadow Creek's uh, deal, these are relatively inexpensive condos, but really a, a great value. Um, we saw some similar that were easily a hundred grand more and we were like for what they had maybe kind of a you know thinsy fireplace and that was about it and I was like a hundred grand that's a lot for a fireplace and I don't really need one of those so um, new construction is great because it's new um, there's something wonderful about that in that you never have to worry about um, how old are these pipes or you know what's going on with this toilet or any other things of that nature so that's a great thing. Um, we did get to pick the flooring uh, in a couple of spots. The paint was already what it was going to be because that's how they kept the price down is they made big buys on a lot of stuff in advance and they'd already been sitting on it. And, you know, we didn't like the chandelier thing, so we ditched that and got something else. And, you know, it is what it is. Um, but overall, you know, the new construction was great, but as Laura had mentioned previously, the price was already set, and it was set, um, you know, full disclosure, we we sold our home for three, was it 339? Something like I that. I think that's what we yeah. finally settled on. We bought the condo for 252, and we banked the rest. Mm -hmm. And so, and, there, and, and, and another, another quick sideline is we did that partially also because of our families and what they are going through. My parents are 87. Julie's mom just had a massive stroke, lost the entire left side use of her body. Um, we have family members, you know, brothers and sisters and whatnot. Uh, black sheep haven't, you know, sometimes made the best life choices in the world. We kind of financially wanted to circle our wagons to protect them as well. And so this was a great opportunity for us to bank that equity and do things with it to help our family, even though sometimes they're dumb. But um, <laughs> that we we'll can't always We'll scratch that. Right, we'll scratch that. Thanks. 
Um, <laughs> So yeah, the, the, the condo community uh, that we moved into and that situation was great. And now just to give you an insight into this, the latest builds in there, the last ones that are going up, the same exact unit that we have, same square footage, same build, everything is now 369 from 252. So condos can be an amazing investment as well. Um, we had no idea that that was going to be the mm -hmm. case. I mean, it, yep. it's just stunning. So, yep. so we're going to kind of wrap up Rick fairly quickly because we want to have time. Because he Jake. talks too much. Oh no, not at all. <laughs> um, so, any regrets that were there? Anything that is you know unexpected that you've found since you've lived there that have been challenges, and just really anything else you'd love to add before we wrap up. Not really. I mean, again, Julie and I knew what we were getting into, but to reiterate, you know, something Peter had covered uh, earlier, uh, an HOA is a new thing for us. Uh, bylaws are a new thing for us. Having a governing board of your property is a new thing for us. And I'm not going to lie, there was a little bit of drama there with some of the uh, folks who had moved in. Uh, one lady in particular thought she actually owned her land that she's sitting on. No, you don't. She started planting all this crazy stuff and putting gnomes and plastic beavers and all this tchotchke <laughs> stuff. It was just tchotchke wonderland. And of course, one of the, uh, one of the heavies in the community, the one guy I, I dubbed mayor of uh, Meadow Creek, he had to go in and confront this lady and tell her, you, you can't have all this stuff in here and you got to get rid of all this crap. It's just not allowed. And she just couldn't grasp that this wasn't her yard. It's like, nope, you own from the studs in, basically. Everything on the exterior and out is part of the association. So that's, that's a unique thing. Um, you know, what's fun about our community, too, is we, we actually have a Facebook group, and we are together a lot on Facebook, and we are having our own block party. We're very tight, and they are the best part about this place is the people. And they're mostly retired. I'd say we're probably the fourth youngest group there. There's one family that actually does have teenagers, but for the most part, it is kind of a retirement community. Um, and, and they're just lovely, lovely people to be with, and we enjoy them very much. But, you know, some of them do get a little, uh, like somebody wanted to have a garage sale the other day. It's like, nope, no garage sales, not allowed in the bylaws. And well, that, that was some Facebook drama right there. But, you know, but you, you have to be okay with those things. And, you know, and we are, and that's fine, because I don't want to have a garage sale. I don't want to mow my lawn. I don't do any of that stuff. So that was good. <laughs> okay, just so you know, Gnome Lady needed a better realtor. That was the problem. So. That's true. 